to state-run television last night, angrily saying he'll ask for his nation's Congress for even more power to, quote, fight imperialism. Let's get the details now from Telemundo's Lori Montenegro in Washington, D.C. Lori, good morning. Good morning to you, Jose. Buenos dias. What, buenos dias. What exactly are these new sanctions the U.S. is imposing? Well, Jose, we saw the president yesterday sign an executive order where he declared um, Venezuela a state of emergency, the situation there, and therefore it is a threat to the national security of the United States. With that, what they've done is pave the road for more severe sanctions in the future if they deem necessary, something similar to what has happened with Iran and Syria. And so we saw the president for the first time, the White House, uh, name seven individuals um, in Venezuela, six men, one woman. These are high-ranking military officials. Uh, one of them is the head of the national police, and the woman is a prosecutor, and they've been accused of uh, what the administration says is in violating human rights. Uh, they have used violence. They have tried to limit um, uh, free expression. Um, they have uh, uh, participated in arbitrary arrest. All of this, Jose, uh, to try and block the opposition in that country. Now, um, you, as we well know, what this means also is that they will freeze their assets if they have any here in the United States and more importantly um, for Washington is that if they have a visa it will be revoked and if they don't have a visa they won't be allowed to return here to the or to come into the United States. Now we know that uh, the United States is Venezuela's largest uh, trading partner and what a lot of people uh, would like to see is because Venezuela is the fourth provider of crude to this nation is maybe the U.S. Um, attack that. They think that that's what would really Really hurt um, the Venezuelan government, but right now the administration is not prepared to take that step. So, and this administration's steps are really also part of a call by some on Capitol Hill to precisely do what they can to kind of tighten the screws around Venezuela. But, but as you say, uh, as long as the uh, oil that uh, Venezuela exports to the United States remains at its current uh, status, mm -hmm. there, there will be very little change or, or really any damage that uh, the administration or anybody else could do politically to uh, Venezuela at this time. That's uh, correct, Jose. And, you know, the administration uh, yesterday uh, wanted or asked for uh, the Venezuelan government to consider liberating uh, what they call political prisoners. We know that Leopoldo Lopez has been detained for more than a year and has never even faced a trial, nor any formal charges have been uh, brought against him. And then a couple of weeks ago, uh, we saw the government um, arrest the mayor of Caracas, Ledesma, and other supporters. So the situation there is deteriorating. The U.S., I think, had had hopes that maybe Latin America could pressure um, Venezuela uh, to, you know, take steps to uh, become uh, the great democracy that it has, a great democratic history that it's had for over 200 years. So definitely what we are seeing is an escalation, Jose, of the tensions between these two countries. They haven't had an amb ambassador since 2010, and now the U.S. has been told that they have to reduce their diplomatic personnel in that country. Lori Montanero from Washington, thank you so very much. And we're seeing live uh, pictures of the president getting ready to head on to Atlanta. Uh, and uh, this is at uh, the uh, Andrews Air Force Base. He's getting right now on to Air Force One. He was on Marine One. Uh, from the White House to Andrews. There you see him heading to Atlanta. Let me uh, continue the conversation on, on Venezuela uh, for a moment after we uh, were talking about the president's executive order yesterday uh, regarding that uh, South American country. Uh, let me bring in Drexel University Assistant Professor George Chicariello Mayer, also the author of the book We Created Chavez, A People's History of the Venezuelan Revolution. Professor, thanks for being with me this morning. Thanks for having me on, Jose. What do you think this new round of U.S. sanctions uh, will have on, on Venezuela? Well, I think it's really astounding, um, and clearly it's an attempt to, you know, to make certain sectors happy domestically and in Venezuela. But the, the really interesting thing is that this is going to be poisonous for the Venezuelan opposition. This is an opposition that already looks as though it's got one foot in the empire to many poor Venezuelans, especially, you know, these are people whose kids go to school in the United States, uh, people who take shopping trips to Miami. Um, and so any action by the United States government and by the president to make it look as though he's collaborating directly with 
with the interests of this Venezuelan opposition are just going to hurt them at the polls. So you think that uh, the opposition that, as you say, has one foot in, in Miami, it, it, this is a pressure from the opposition, and this is not in any way the president of the United States looking at what's going on in Venezuela, where all of uh, the uh, private television stations, radio stations have been closed. There are people going to jail. Just last week, uh, Antonio Ledesma, as you know, was jailed in that country. Still no charges against uh, the opposition leader uh, that has been in prison now for more than a year. You think this is all has to do with with money and and uh, with the opposition, not uh, because of concern for a country that is going through some very difficult times. Well, first of all, it's not true that the private television stations have been closed. That's something that keeps being repeated. That's simply well, not um, the case. Caracas Television is open. Is that what you're telling me? Well, that is open on cable, but you said that no, no, all no, no. private That's stations are closed. About. Global Vision is open. Global Vision is a is a private television station that is yes. open. That is that is broadcast. Purchased constantly. recently by Maduro's uh, allies, correct? No, not correct. Um, purchased by a group of investors that no one knows who they are exactly okay. yet. But to All get right. to the point, when it comes to this Venezuelan opposition, um, the point is that this is an opposition that has not been able to win an election and, and systematically We're not talking is about caught the opposition right now. To, That's okay. not what I asked well, you. Well, we'll talk about we'll talk about the Let's Obama about administration the then. The Obama yeah. administration Perfect. released an executive order filled with misrepresentations of the protests last year. Bear in mind, and maybe you know this, maybe you don't. It's not often noted that the majority of those killed in the protests last year, February and March of 2014 were either chavistas or military and police officials, some shot with sniper rifles from the top of buildings. And the, the picture of what emerges from what last year was of the overstepping of certain police officials, certainly. Many of them have been yeah. arrested. Um, but the continued impunity of Venezuelan leaders of the opposition who continue to call for and support these kind of violent protests. Uh, Ledesma is charged with participating in a coup plot, and all in a, an executive order from Obama uh, that does everything but fall short of calling for regime change does is to support the claim that Lesma maybe was involved in something yeah, do, uh, do you aimed at regime change in, in Venezuela. But do you think, and I, I don't, I've lost track, maybe you know, Professor, how many uh, different uh, alleged coups uh, have been thwarted by uh, Maduro, uh, either from the United States or from Colombia, et cetera? Do you think that in any way uh, the uh, Maduro administration is utilizing the United States and their position uh, to uh, further clamp down and, and essentially say, look, you know, we're, we're threatened. Uh, we need to do more things, like the president of Venezuela said last night, that he's going to ask for Congress for more. Uh, authority. Well, it's certainly true that any action by the Obama administration, by the United States government, um, facilitates Nicolas Maduro's political, uh, you know, political power and, and allows him to shore up an anti-imperialist front, which he's doing uh, today. With regard to the decree power, the enabling laws, these are, these are laws that are used by every single Venezuelan government in the past 60 years. This is nothing abnormal, and yet every time it occurs, it's something that, that becomes a sort of a, a panic talking point in the press. The reality is there are threats to the Maduro government. The Obama administration, by calling this a national security issue to the United States, yeah. has essentially admitted that, that, you know, that they are committed to supporting this Venezuelan opposition to the end. George, uh, I hope I don't kill your name. It's Chicariello Mayor, is that right? That is correct. <laughs> Listen, I thank you for your time. Thanks for being with Thanks, me. Jose. Appreciate it. And new information this morning on Harrison Ford's plane crash. The NTSB is out with its preliminary report finding the vintage plane Ford was flying in experienced engine failure shortly after takeoff from the Santa Monica airport. Ford then started to make a left turn back toward the airport. He hit the top of a tree a tall tree prior to putting the plane down in an open area of a golf course. Harrison Ford reportedly still hospitalized in stable condition, broken bones and cuts to his face. Coming up, we're following breaking political news that could have huge implications on the, on the 2016 presidential race. Today, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton will address questions about her personal use of personal email while she was Secretary of State. We'll have more on this after a quick break. So they didn't actually come to blows. Okay. What was that? High noon on the audit committee. Can't agree on an auditor. Ross needs someone who knows the industry as well as he does. Good luck. For Brian, it's whether he can call the partner at midnight. So, what happened? They both came up with the same name. Really? BDO. Huh. People who know, know BDO. When it comes to good nutrition, I'm no expert. That would be my daughter. Hi, Dad. She's a dietitian, and back when I wasn't eating right, she got me drinking Boost. 
It's got a great taste, and it helps give me the nutrition I was missing. Helping me stay more like me. Boost Complete Nutritional Drink has 26 essential vitamins and minerals, including calcium and vitamin D to support strong bones, and 10 grams of protein to help maintain muscle, all with a delicious taste. Grandpa! Stay strong, stay active with Boost. Nobody told us to expect it. Intercourse that's painful due to menopausal changes. It's not likely to go away on its own. So let's do something about it. Kremer and Vaginal Cream can help. It provides estrogens to help rebuild vaginal tissue and make intercourse more comfortable. Kremer and Vaginal Cream treats vaginal changes due to menopause and moderate to severe painful intercourse caused by these changes. Don't use it if you've had unusual bleeding, breast or uterine cancer, blood clots, liver problems, stroke or heart attack, are allergic to any of its ingredients, or think you're pregnant. Side effects may include headache, pelvic pain, breast pain, vaginal bleeding.